Hey guys, how you going? So I've got another Q&A today from a community member, Abdullah Ali. In terms of coding, is it okay to forget some stuff most of the time? <laughs> I really like this question. This is a very simple, but um, maybe a deceptive question, right? Because intuitively you would think, well, you want to remember as much as you can, right? But it's not so straightforward in programming. And it's why we have things like documentation and um, programming source code references and official um, API docs. I'll tell you a quick story. When I started programming and I got my first game dev programming kind of job, I took great pride in remembering everything, like every syntax, every kind of API thing. I used to try to memorize everything, right? And I was like doing it all in notepad. I wasn't even using like a code, a proper code editor or IDE. And I remember asking the senior developer next to me one afternoon, like, do you, I asked him, do you remember how to do something? Cause I, I, I kind of had forgotten and I needed to work something out. And he turned to me and he said, I don't know. <laughs> I let the IDE work it out for me. And I was puzzled and I looked at him and I said, IDE? He said, what, you're not using an IDE? I said, no, I'm like coding in notepad. <laughs> And I was trying to be all like hardcore or something, you know? I was like, man, I, I code in Notepad. I don't need no IDE. I don't need no, I don't need no autocomplete. And <laughs> I quickly realized through my um, um, youthful ignorance how, um, how wrong I was in that approach. But in a way, I was glad that I took the time to kind of learn the foundations at least. It's like this, you don't have to remember how all the syntax works exactly. You need to know more so if something is possible. Because if you know it's possible and you've done it before, then you can quickly um, check the docs or something and um, very easily then apply it. But if you've never done it and you don't know if it's possible, then that's another thing. Because if you don't know if it's possible and you haven't done it, then what the hell are you gonna write? You, you don't even know how to formulate it, you know? But if you've done it before, then you know it's possible. And I think that's more important. A, a good programmer or, and software engineer has a, a wide understanding of all possibilities, but is not necessarily so um, consumed with how every um, syntax variation works. Because as you work through your game development career or programming career, you'll find yourself adopting many, many different languages. It's not gonna be just C Sharp or this. Like at the moment, I probably, I know probably like five or six different languages that I use kind of regularly. And I have to switch between these languages often day to day, you know, um, between my day job and my indie work. And quite often I'm getting confused with the syntaxes, right? Where I'll be using uh, the C-sharp conventions for like a, a different language and, and vice versa. So you have to kind of learn to compartmentalize these things somewhat, but that's a little bit of a different topic. Um, so to answer your question, no, you don't need to remember everything that rely on the IDE, rely on the autocomplete as best as you can, use it as tools to increase your efficiency and um, workflow. But with that said, that doesn't mean don't go out of your way to do the best um, job you can to learn the APIs and the uh, syntax. Early on when I was learning Unity and C-sharp, I read through co comprehensive um, C-sharp um, books I knew most of that would be forgotten, but I also knew that most of it would kind of be absorbed into my brain and allow me to apply it later on when I saw the matching code come up in different work situations. And the same goes with the Unity docs. I spent a lot of time when I was learning, and still do for that matter periodically, going through the official Unity API um, docs. And you should do that with any language you're, you're learning or any game um, engine. And just going through and seeing what all the things do and what's there, like what's a transform? How can you interact with it? What um, different um, properties has it got? You know, oh, you can change the rigid body um, values in this way or that way. You know, you can change a box client to size. Um, you know, you can freeze the, the rotation of a rigid body and just all the different options. It's really good to get an idea of the landscape. And that's what's important. It's like um, an adventurer with an open valley. You know, you know the mountains over there, you know the rivers over there, and then you have this map. 
okay? But you have to understand the landscape first. With enough time, writing these languages over and over again, they will eventually fall into deep memory, where you can just kind of write them naturally. A bit like playing the piano, you know what I mean? The, the pianist doesn't always have to check um, where his fingers are. They just kind of know where to go. And programming is very much like that. When you start, you often have to kind of um, think a lot about what goes next kind of thing. But as you develop and mature as a programmer, your fingers will just kind of know what to write next. And well, it's not just your fingers, obviously it's your brain and everything in, in tune with each other, but that's how muscle memory works. So do um, have faith that that will develop over time as well. So thank you very much for the question, Abdullah. I wish you all the best on your game dev journey. And if anyone else would like to send in a question, I'll drop a link down below and just send me your screen name or if you want to keep it anonymous, just let me know. All right, guys, see you in the next video.